What's up guys, this is Vinyl like Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I wanted to talk about Zero the Assassin and whether he is any good and or fun to play. On the one hand, Zero could prove to be quite versatile as he can excel with a number of different playstyles and builds. At the same time, Zero can require a little more skill to use than some of the other characters to really unlock his damage potential. In this video, I'm going to talk about the various pros and cons of Zero in both solo and co-op settings in an attempt to answer the question posed in this video's title. And to start, let's discuss a few reasons why some may think that Zero is a bad character. Now, Zero has developed the reputation of being pretty poor defensively with words or phrases like squishy or glass tank coming to mind. On some level, I do think these assessments are accurate, as the vast majority of the skills present in all three of Zero's skill trees are offensive-focused. Specifically, there isn't a single skill in the sniping tree that boosts anything related to shields or health, and as for the other two skill trees, you do get skills like Innervate from Cunning, and a few skills like Iron Hand, Grim, and maybe Resurgence from the Bloodshed tree. But... For the most part, the rest of Zero skills either improve damage or improve your capacity to deal damage. I suspect this is a big reason why Zero, possibly more so than some of the other characters, is heavily reliant on the Grog Nozzle in the game's later difficulties. After all, he doesn't really have very many other vectors for healing, and depending on your playstyle, certain skills like Grim are actually counterproductive and make you far less effective with melee. At the very least, I think it's fair to say that Zero does suffer defensively. Things could certainly be worse, I guess, but I think Zero would have benefited from having more skills that improve shields or other skills that improve maximum health or health regeneration. To go along with Zero's poor defensive capabilities, I sometimes get the feeling that I'm really exposed while playing Zero. Unlike characters like Accident or Gage, who have turrets or robots to draw aggro, Maya, who has the ability to phase lock enemies, or Salvador and Krieg, where both have high defensive as well as offensive capabilities, all Zero can really do is hide behind objects or cloak via deception. And yes, while you can equip a big shield and make use of Healthgate to be more resilient, the inability to inherently distract, crowd control, or just tank damage can sometimes make getting out of a bad situation a lot more difficult. Thus, you have to be a lot more strategic than you would be on some of the other characters. This can be a difficult adjustment for some players, on top of how Zero tends to require a bit more timing and precision with your attacks to be more effective. Speaking of timing and precision, we should probably talk about that and how it makes Zero have a bit of a learning curve. Specifically, and as an example, Zero's action skill, Deception, provides higher damage boosts the longer you have the skill active before firing or attacking. And when this gets combined with using a roid shield, you may find you have to juggle the amount of time Deception is active while also making sure that your shield is depleted. This can be a problem on some of the better roid shields, as many of them have fairly low recharge delay, which makes your attack window pretty small. Sniper users are in a similar situation, as you have to properly maintain critical ascension stacks so they don't fall off, while simultaneously waiting long enough in deception to get the highest damage possible. Not to mention that in this specific scenario, you really need to land that critical hit, because if you don't, your critical ascension stacks will start to decay and fall off. In general, the need for better precision and timing while playing can be stressful and a turnoff for some players. Especially if you're coming from someone like Salvador, where timing and precision is a lot less crucial in dealing the maximum amount of damage. So I guess overall, I would say that Zero struggles defensively, he has a tendency to be a little overexposed, and he requires a little bit more skill and effort than some of the other characters. However, despite these things, I think it's fair to say that Zero more than makes up for all of that with his numerous strengths. To start, one of the major advantages that Zero has is that Zero can be played in more varied and viable ways. You can either run and gun like most of the other characters, or you can be more specific and focus on snipers to pick people off from a distance, or you can take enemies out up close with melee attacks. 
There's even some niche play styles that can fit into some of these larger categories. And as an example, maybe you want to use infinities with one shot one kill to get a consistent damage boost if you like to run a gun. Or maybe if you're playing as a sniper, you want to run four pimpernels in each element in combination with four for boosted damage without relying quite as much on critical ascension. Having access to a wider variety of playstyles also makes Zero a little less gear dependent than some of the other characters. Granted, Zero benefits greatly from having great roid shields, snipers, and other great equipment, but having the ability to quickly swap skills to gear yourself towards melee, where weapon level isn't as much of an issue, and then swap back to conventional weapons once you get some nice stuff, is definitely a plus. In fact, while we're on the subject of gear dependence, it's probably worth bringing up the fact that quite a bit of Zero's best items can easily be obtained and are quest rewards. For melee players, you can obtain a grog nozzle by starting the Beard Makes the Man side quest. You can obtain the Rapier Assault Rifle by completing the Message in a Bottle side quest in Hater's Folly. And you can obtain the Love Thumper by completing the Best Mother's Day Ever side quest. So, the core items for this type of build or playstyle are actually very easy to obtain. For sniper players, you have plenty of great and easy to obtain snipers like the Trespasser from the Animal Rights side quest, the Morningstar from the Hyperion Contract number 873 side quest, and the Pimpernel from the Don't Copy That Floppy side quest. Not to mention that due to how Zero's Critical Ascension works, you can usually get by using a decent sniper until you get a very high-end one. Overall, though, I think it's fair to say that Zero can be very flexible in terms of builds and playstyles, as well as how he tends to be less gear-dependent than some of the other characters. So if you're looking for someone to play, Zero would be a great choice. Now, while it's true that Zero's lack of defensive skills can present some problems, Zero's skills and skill trees overall are pretty good, if not overpowered from an offensive standpoint. While I'll talk about Boar and Critical Ascension in their own sections, Skills like One Shot One Kill, Two Fang, Death Mark plus Death Blossom, Ambush, Rising Shot, Killing Blow, Backstab, Execute, and Many Must Fall are all truly excellent. Even some of the Stepstone skills like Velocity, Be Like Water, Grim, Killer, Optics, and Precision have their own merits when used in the correct situations or with the proper builds. The only skills that I can think of that are bad or terrible would probably be Unforeseen and maybe either Like the Wind or Kill Confirmed. And even in the case of those last two, or specifically Kill Confirmed, that can be pretty useful provided you take your time while placing shots. Considering that that's maybe three skills out of a total of 30 or so, and I would say that's a pretty good ratio, and overall, zero is pretty good when it comes to skills. Now, while I wouldn't say this means that it's pretty hard to screw up a Zero build, because I think it can be easier than you might expect, I do think the wide variety of awesome offensive-based skills definitely gives Zero a leg up on the competition. Especially in the case of skills like Two Fang, which can improve your rate of fire, or Death Blossom and Death Mark, which is great for debuffing any enemies that you might encounter. Speaking of offensive skills, though, it's about time we talked about Boar. Without a doubt, Boar is easily one of the most overpowered skills in Borderlands 2 across any character, and this in part comes from the fact that it really only requires one skill point, but it also comes from the skill itself, which allows bullets to pierce enemies, and every time an enemy is pierced, you get a 100% damage increase. So, if you fire a bullet that dealt 100 damage with Boar, you would deal 200 damage to the second enemy, 400 to the third, and so on. However, where Boar really starts to come into its own is on enemies with child projectiles, as these secondary projectiles can occasionally overlap an enemy's hitboxes, causing multiple boars on the same enemy, which can greatly enhance damage. Weapons like the Pimpernel can pull this off, as the projectile can be shot at an enemy's foot, or like their knee, and then you can get those secondary child projectiles to arc up and potentially hit an enemy twice. Or in the case of a weapon like the Twister, projectiles could travel through an enemy, then come back around and travel through them again for that enhanced damage. 
One of the best examples of Boar's raw power is up against Hyperius, as zero players can use a singularity grenade to draw the minions together in front of or around Hyperius, and then from there, you can use a multi-projectile weapon, and if you're lucky, you can get the hitboxes to overlap and perform what is known in the community as the God Boar, which allows you to one-shot Hyperius. If you're curious, here is what that looks like. As you can see, Boar alone makes Zero pretty powerful, and the fact that this skill can be obtained fairly easily and with minimal skill point investment really makes it essential for all high-level builds. Keep in mind that everything from melee to sniper to just general Zero builds can take advantage of this skill, which makes it incredibly valuable as well. Something else we should talk about is Critical Ascension. While not quite as powerful as Boar, Critical Ascension is still pretty powerful, and while it is unfortunate that you're forced to use snipers and you have to properly maintain the stacks, for each critical hit you score with the sniper rifle, you're going to gain one stack of Critical Ascension, which will boost gun damage by 5% and critical hit damage by 6%. You can obtain upwards of 999 stacks, however, you'll usually be able to maintain anywhere from 50 to 100 fairly reliably, and that means you're going to get a 250% gun plus 300% critical bonus with 50 stacks, and a 500% gun and 600% critical damage bonus with 100 stacks. These bonuses can get fairly massive, and when combined with Kunai as well as Zero's Deception, you should be able to pretty easily steamroll most enemies with some well-placed critical hits. And if you're having trouble stacking critical ascension, you can usually get a low-level Vladov sniper to help rack up a couple of stacks that won't one-shot the enemy you encounter, while then swapping to your intended sniper to then take them out with some of those well-placed shots. Ultimately, this skill is a must for Sniper Zero, and if you can, I highly recommend that you spec for Critical Ascension, as the benefits far outweigh some of the difficulties that you might experience while using it. At the end of the day, guys, I think you're going to find that despite his flaws, Zero is actually a pretty excellent character, and while he may suffer somewhat defensively, he more than makes up for it by focusing all of his efforts offensively. Not to mention that between his potential flexibility in terms of builds and playstyles, as well as his awesome complement of skills like boar and critical sentient, to just name a few, I think you're going to find that he's pretty hard to beat. While he's not the strongest character in the entire game, Zero is definitely quite strong, and while he may have somewhat of a learning curve at first, you may find that it doesn't really make him that hard to play. After all, if you spend the proper amount of time learning some of his nuances, you should be able to figure out how to deal a bunch of damage with him and have a lot of fun playing him as well. So in conclusion, Zero is a pretty great character in Borderlands 2, and you should definitely give him a try if you haven't done so. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.